Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Lakewind Christian Center's midweek service. My name again is Pastor Derek Griffin. I say again because every Wednesday, most of the time, I'm here to bring a word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, pastors, for allowing me to bring a word on Wednesday evenings to everyone. Um, hey, Brother Danny, how you doing? Mother Moore, welcome everybody. Come on in. Get yourself situated, guys and ladies. We're getting ready to get on the, the wave of Christ today, this evening. We're going to get on the word like never before. Uh, God is always talking. You know that, right? He never sleeps nor slumbers. And his word is always moving. It's active. It's doing its thing here in the earth and doing it through us. Hey, Cheryl, pray for that healing for you, young lady. I hope I hope you got that thing. I know you did. I know you grabbed that healing. Praise God. And uh, we're going to get there uh, in agreement with you on that healing. But uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you, Lakewind family, for joining us every week. Those of you who are consistently constant because you're looking for that breakthrough, because we know that consistency, consistency and being constant in the things of God, that's the key. That's the way we get our breakthrough in the areas that we're we're asking God to help us because we need help. Do we not? Yes, we do. And we need the help of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And uh, I'm just so excited to be here this evening, as always. Um, and we're going to get right to it. I'm going to go ahead and open up with prayer. But uh, I got a little song I want to play before we begin the message tonight. And uh, it's going to be interesting. But let me go ahead and pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to come together once again this evening. God, as always, I ask that you think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords as I minister to these, your sheep, Jesus. Lord, I ask that let you allow revelation knowledge to flow freely, uninterrupted by any demonic or satanic force. And as always, God, less of me, purely none of me, because I'm nothing without you. And all of you, God, let it come forward. Let your word come forward and let it do what it do, God. Let it bless the people, your people, those who you've chosen, those who you've called to a special purpose here in the earth. God, we just want to say thank you for all you are doing, all that you have done, and all that you will do on our behalf through Christ Jesus, your son. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In these things we pray in Jesus' mighty and majestic name, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Tonight's topic or subject is take one day at a time. Ooh-wee. Take one day at a time. I got an oldie but goodie I'm going to play for you guys. And ladies, um, it's a song that my aunt would sing years ago, my aunt Vi, and uh, my, my cousin Jamie and I were talking about it earlier. And she's like, man, that's a song my mama used to sing when she saw the title of my, my subject. And I said, well, let me play it tonight. Some of you may remember this song. Um, I don't recall it, but it's obviously a very popular song because it's been done by a variety of artists on the country circuit, the the, the, the black music side, black church side. Um, I mean, modern day, it's amazing, but it's called One Day at a Time. And uh, let me play it for you. Let's see if you all remember this. We're going to take one day at a time. Here we go. How many of you all remember this song? You remember this, Pastor K? <laughs> Show me the stairway. You all remember this song, Mother Moore? Is this familiar to you all? One day at a time. One day at a time. Jesus. Yes, Mother Pat, you know it, huh? <laughs> Amen. Give me the strength. Woo. To help me to do what I have to do, Lord. 
<laughs> you do know it, Pastor K. I thought you did. <laughs> Jamie said, Pastor K know it. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Help me to take one day at a time. Amen. There you go. God bless y'all. So y'all knew the song. But I tell you, uh, personally, I've been going through a whole lot these past few weeks. And this message just came to me. And, and the Holy Spirit said, Derek, just take one day at a time. You know, stop worrying about, you know, what's going to happen next week, next month, next year. And, you know, you get caught up in something you can't control, you can't see. And, and just worry about what you got going on right now. And he said, don't worry about it because I got it under control. Just focus in today. Learn to love the day. Woo -hoo -hoo, man. And it took a lot of pressure off of me. This message is going to bless you as well. The foundational scripture is, I'm going to read scriptures, Matthew 6, 25 through 34. And I'm going to show you where God emphasizes that we should stop worrying about tomorrow. Focus on today. It goes like this. I'm reading the New International Version of Matthew 6, 25 through 34. It goes like this. It says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, mm. what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. He says, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet... Your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. Did you hear that? He knows we need them. We don't have to chase things. God knows we need them. Mm. But verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. <clears throat> Lord, have mercy. Ain't that true? That's the foundational scripture. Let us rock and roll. Here we go. Living one day at a time isn't always easy. But it's what God actually has told us to do. It is part of his plan for our lives. God wants us to truly experience his presence daily. Watch this. If we, if conditional, if we do what God intends for us today, the rest will take care of itself. Literally. If you go to Matthew 6 and 34, once again, the NIV version says in Matthew 6, 34, watch this. Jesus tells us not to worry about what? Tomorrow. He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself each day, each day, one at a time, each day has enough trouble of its own. Mm, ain't that the truth? It's always something, you know, always, if it ain't one thing, it's another in each day. Each day has enough to be focused on that we can't be worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. See, we seriously, if you go to Matthew 6 and 34, I'm going to read to you the message version of that scripture. See how the message breaks it down. It says, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. 
He says, God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. What are these hard things that he's referring to? Watch this. Whatever difficulties you're dealing with right now in your life, in your family, on your job, in your health, whatever challenges you're dealing with mentally. Some of us are mentally drained. We're dealing with the oppression, the depression. These are spirits. We're attacked at our side. We're getting things going in a wrong direction. We have these things oppressing, pressing on us, stealing our joy. You know, I mean, come on. We're, we're constantly under trial. Why? Because we've been chosen and the enemy is doing what he does. And then we have the nerve to self-inflict those things upon ourselves. That's where you really need to wake up because it's the self-inflicted challenges, the self-inflicted burdens, those things that we create in our own minds because we're worrying about something we cannot control or change in the future. That's why the Lord is saying to us in the word, focus on what you can handle today. You cannot change what you can't see in the future. God's got that. Y'all better hear me. God's got the future. It's in his hands. Y'all hearing this? God's got the future. God's got it. I'm going I'm to break it down to you. I'm going to break it down to you. So we need to take today and live it to the fullest. Enjoy today. Just enjoy today. Let the worries of tomorrow wait for tomorrow. Most of our worries aren't for today. Watch that. Most of what we worry about is not about what's going on right now, today, in the now moment. It's about what we're anticipating through anxiety in the future. Their worries, their worries about what will happen in the future. That's what these worries are about what's going to happen in the future. Now, many of these we can do nothing about at the present time, right? Let's just be honest. So we need to pray about them and leave them with God. You know, God said, cast all your cares. Cares are about things you have no control over. Your future. Cast all your cares on him. So if you're worrying about what's going on with the monkeypox, what you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? The monkeypox ain't nothing but AIDS. They just changed the name. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Let's just keep it real. Why are we sitting up here freaking out because the news is putting the stuff out there about the monkeypox is coming? The monkeypox has always been here. It ain't gone nowhere. Coronavirus has always been here. <laughs> it's always been here. It ain't going nowhere. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. This fear and this worry that the world is throwing on us about the future impending doom has nothing to do with the fact that you are alive today and the sun was shining and the air is still clear. Food still tastes good. Restaurants still open. Gas still flowing. Prices might be high, but the gas is still flowing. Electricity still on. Internet still working. Church doors are still open. So you, you, you worried about tomorrow when you should be just being thankful for today. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> Listen. Listen and watch your breakthrough come through today. But don't worry doesn't mean don't plan. I repeat, don't worry does not mean don't plan. Never take anything in life for granted. We can't take these moments where we can share the word of God. We have the liberty and the protection to speak clearly and communicate with one another freely about God's goodness without any governmental interruption like in other countries where folks are dying because they believe in Christ Jesus. The Bibles have been burned in other countries. You better recognize how blessed you are to be in this. I can know this nation got its issues. Don't get me wrong. What nation doesn't? It's the world. But my goodness, we can praise God. We can share the word of God. We can pray. We can, man, we got access to the goodness of God on the day. The mercies of God are there for us on every day. I mean, how blessed are we to be able right now through this medium called Facebook, share the truth of God's word without any interruption. Ain't it a blessing? Be thankful. I'm saying we should plan for tomorrow, but we should not live there. I repeat, we should plan for tomorrow, but don't live there. 
Here's what happens. We should live for and enjoy today. Enjoy the blessings that God has given us today. Enjoy the family and friends that we have today. Goodness gracious. Enjoy the health that we have today. Enjoy the comforts of your home today. Tomorrow, they may not be there. Yeah, yeah. When Jesus tells us not to worry about tomorrow, he doesn't mean we should not be prudent in life. Jesus was not teaching against prudence, but against the anxiety that robs us of our trust in God. So worry and anxiety robs the trust that we should have in God. When you stop trusting, that means you're worrying. When you stop trusting that God's got it under control, what's going on out here in the world, and somehow you slipped into this, this, this spell that God doesn't care, that God is not going to fix it, that God is not paying attention, really? Don't be deceived. God knows already how the story ends. It's his story. <laughs> it's his book. <laughs> it's his world. So what you worrying about? The father who loves you? You got it, baby. Get your hands off of what's not yours. <laughs> we don't own it. He does. We're called to be, watch this, vessels that brings the good news of Jesus Christ. That guess what? Your sins have been paid for. Live. Live. Enjoy the life I gave you. Spread the good news. You don't have to work for it no more. You ain't got to have these physical sacrifices of the lambs and all of that. Nope. One sacrifice one man has taken care of and has atoned for your sin. You are free and free indeed. Live abundant life. I want, God says, I want you to enjoy this life. That's what y'all are doing right now. That's exactly what you all are doing. You are enjoying life. You're so blessed. You go to your grocery store. Your groceries are still there. You all are still going to the mall and shopping. You all are still enjoying a good time on vacation. On boats, having dinner, all having a great time, safely traveling in the air by water. God's got you protected because you're his child. Don't ever be ashamed of being blessed in the day. Don't you ever be ungrateful for the simple fact that you can breathe God's air right now. Don't you ever forget you're blessed in this day. Don't worry about tomorrow what God's got your back today. Mm. Woo, taking life one day at a time doesn't mean not guarding against the future in practical ways. Listen to me. This is a clear point I want you to get because it's helped me to overcome my personal challenges by just focusing on today and not worrying about tomorrow. Watch this. Here's where we have to be practical. We can't just sit around and say God's got it and don't do anything and don't plan and don't be practical because a lot of us have this issue of not being practical. How about when we get car insurance? Watch this, homeowner's insurance, right? Come on, health insurance. And bank savings or investments. All that's being practical, that's planning, that's being planned, that's being thoughtful about when that time comes, I'll be prepared for a certain situation. If I have a car accident, if conditional, because I planned by having car insurance, I have the ability to get the car fixed and get back to work and keep going. What have you planned for your future in terms of salvation? That's why your assurance from faith in Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, receiving Jesus Christ, is your insurance for eternity in heaven. Y'all don't hear me. You ain't dead yet, but you're planning for the transition spiritually by being born again and practically by having life insurance or final expense insurance. You hear me? Long-term care insurance. You buy insurance to plan for an 
un, for an event that you can't control today. But you can control being practical, being wise, by putting things in place for a future event that could be catastrophic, critical, or chronic. And you, you were prudent. You were God wants you to be intelligent. Do the right things. Plan. But don't worry about it, right? So when you buy the insurance, you don't go out waiting to get into an accident. Oh, I'm going to have an accident. Whatever. No, you just drive like you're going to normally do. Because you got the peace of mind that you took care of business in today. Some of you all haven't taken care of your business today. You haven't gotten your life insurance still. You've been take, you've been, I'm telling you, you haven't gotten your Christ insurance either. Folks got to wake up and plan for today. God said, focus on what? Today, what you can do. Woo! Come on now. We cannot control the future. It belongs to God. I say it again. We haven't been called by God to control the future. That's his job because it belongs to him. This is his world. Yes, it is. Contrary to popular belief, God, it's his world. Now, we don't know what is coming out. Put it this way. We don't know what's coming in the future, but our confidence for tomorrow rests in God. So what am I saying? Yes, there are wars and rumors of wars. Yes, there are pestilence and diseases. Yes, there's all kinds of crime and calamity in our local you know, news and so forth in our communities. But I still have hope in Christ. I still have hope that God's going to fix it. I still have hope that, hope that God has an awesome plan for us that believe. I operate in the faith. As Pastor Ryder says, it's all about faith. Trust in God in everything, including those things that create anxiety and worry in our lives. We have to give it to him. Those of us that are still holding on to it, that's why you have these physical ailments. You can't get your healing in your body because you're still holding on and worry and anxiety when God said, let it go. A lot of what we're dealing with challenges in our physical lives and our health comes from the fact that we haven't learned, watch this, to stop worrying about the report that the doctor has given or giving more power to the pain and issue in the body as opposed to giving more power to the word of God that says you are healed by his stripes. That you haven't meditated long enough on the victory in the word in your area of challenge, but you're giving the issue more power because you're talking about it, you're meditating on it, you're complaining about it, you're empowering it with the words of your mouth when God said, the power of life and death is in the tongue. So that who eats it will enjoy the fruit thereof. So if you're talking about your issues every day in the day that you should be praising God and thanking God, you're actually praising your issue and giving it more glory than God. When you confessing over and over, woe is me. Here's my problem. Can't wait to get on the phone to talk about your problem and get everybody else in agreement with your problem. And guess what? You just prepared your future for that problem to have victory in your life. Because that's what you spent your time in the day that the Lord has made when he said you shall rejoice and be glad in it, not complain and be worrisome in it. Y'all don't hear me. I know y'all feeling this one. I'm feeling it because I've made the mistake of wallowing in my pity. And God kept saying, I don't bless pity, son. I bless praise. Whoo. Gee, man. I don't bless pity, brother. He said, I'm not joining your pity party. I'm not going to endorse what destroys you, son. I'm only going to back what gives you life. And that's my word. That's my word. My word. God said, that's my word, bro. I'm only going to set you up for what you believe in me. Don't believe for sickness in me when I gave you the word of health and healing. Don't you do that. You can't expect to be healed when all you're talking about is what? Sickness. You can't expect to be wealthy if all you're talking about is how broke you are. You can't expect to be the best when all you talk about is that I'm the worst. You got to recognize. And that's what you're doing in the day that the Lord has made. Is you're not recognizing, be grateful, be thankful. Let me get my praise on. Let me get my word on right now. Because it plans and prepares me for what? My future. What you say today will affect your tomorrow. Y'all don't hear me. 
Mm. Whoo, in other words, Jesus wasn't telling us not to plan ahead. Instead, he was telling us not to worry about the things of this life and become preoccupied with them. We must put Jesus first instead of things of the world and learn to lean on him for our daily needs. We cannot control the future. It belongs to God. Go to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. The NIV says this. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. So in the day, in the moment, we need to be leaning on his word, leaning on his power, leaning on his strength to overcome our worry, our failures, our mistakes, our, our, just anything that works against the truth of God's word in our life. We need to lean on the truth of God and not the lies of the devil. Y'all don't hear me. See, he sees and knows everything about what's happening in the world today. God is not blind, nor is he ignorant of what's going on today. He knew it beforehand. It's been prophesied. So what we're witnessing right now in the earth has already been prophesied. God already walked it from the beginning to the end. He knows how the story ends. The question is, do you know? Do you know what he knows? Because if you do, then you wouldn't worry about it. Because in the end, we win. Y'all didn't hear me. <laughs> in the end, we win. See, you got to recognize that God knows the outcome of all of what's in your life specifically. Not just the world, but in your... He's so dynamic that he can handle the global issues and come in your house and handle your personal issues all at the same time. That's how powerful our God is. He's not so worried. He doesn't worry because he's in control. He wants you to be in control just like him of your emotions. Yes, in control of your emotions. That's why it's called temperament. Temperance. You got to have temperance. Holy Spirit gives us the strength to temper ourselves, to not get so outlandish with our anxiety and worry that he says, look, when you get to that point, I will give you the comforter to heal you of that anxiety, take it away from you so you can enjoy the day and the moment that you're in right now. Praise God. It's happened. It works for me. It worked for me. I couldn't wait to get out of this nonsense I was going through. Oh, my goodness. But God... Gave me his word. I leaned on the truth of that word. I meditated on it day and night until I got relief. And Lord, he gave me relief. Showed out. He'll do it for you too. Go to Corinthians 12 and 9. Corinthians 12 and 9 says this. Trusting in God each day doesn't mean the day will have no trouble. But with trouble, watch this. God gives us sufficient grace for today when you're going through that trouble. That's what grace is for. Unmerited favor in the area of your affliction, in the area of your physical challenge, in the area of your financial challenge, in the area of the stress on your marital relationship. God gives us grace, his grace and his mercy, which endures forever when we are egregious in our actions, when we make bad mistakes, which we do, we all fall short of the glory of God. But his grace, come on now. That's what it's there for. Understand what God has given you to get back up, get focused and get back on his word and his plan for your life. Praise God. It says in uh, my grace, he says, is sufficient for you. For my power, he said, is made perfect in weakness. So when we're going through these weaknesses of challenges and, 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 and issues and, 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 and all of these demonic spirits attacking us, God says, my grace is good enough for all of that. He said, where sin is, grace further abounds. So as sin grows greater in the world, grace is going even higher. It has no limit, praise God. Grace doesn't stop. Grace so is a circumference around the universe. It's big and, and sin can't overcome it. And it won't overcome it because God owns everything. Y'all don't hear me. 
Y'all got to look at grace as being humongous, well beyond any fathom that we can fathom in terms of how far will grace go forever and ever and ever because it comes from a forever God. Y'all don't hear me. I'm trying to get you to see what you worried about. Why are you tripping? You in, you in a situation where you had some self-inflicted bad decisions in, in, in how you managed your health, how you managed your business, how you managed your marriage. But you know what? Grace is sufficient in the day. I just read it to you. But have you asked? Have you tapped into that grace? Have you prayed about God allow grace to abound in my situation? Your grace, Father, let it come forward. Let it do what it do. Let it get me to a place where I can get to my destiny in your plan. I know I'm going to be healed. I know I'm going to be free. I know I'm going to have what you said I can have, God. Your promises will be in my life. And I say and call it out today. I profess it right now in the name of Jesus. I'm good to go. I'm good to go. Because God wants us to be good to go. Worry is useless. Worry is useless. Go to Matthew 6 and 27. The NIV version says, Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? <laughs> Come on now. No one can improve their life or their lives by worrying. So what's the point of worrying? What a relief to know God will help us through the day and be back to help us again in the morning. So he just doesn't stop with his help in today. Tomorrow he's waiting on you to get you through the next challenge, the next trial, the next tribulation. He's there to get you through it. He didn't say he'd take it away from us. He said, I'll get you through it. He didn't take the cross away from Jesus. He got him through it. Y'all don't hear me. He didn't take him from the whipping. And he didn't take him from all the cursing and stuff that came to him from those who praised him at one time and then said, kill him, crucify him. The same people that praised him, hallelujah, and laid the palms down and did all of that when he was on that donkey and they were calling him king of kings. The same people turned on him and said, crucify him. God didn't stop that. They didn't stop the canine tails of ripping the flesh off of him. God didn't stop folks spitting on him. God didn't stop the soldier from stabbing him in his side and nailing him to the cross. But he got him through it. And now he's seated at the right hand of the father with all power and authority because he was man enough to allow God to do what he had to do in his life. Watch this, for you and I. So why do we complain? Why are we worrying when Jesus did what he did for us? We're living wonderfully because of Jesus. Enjoy the day. God's got tomorrow. Woo! I ain't worried about Russia. I ain't worried about Biden. I ain't worried about none of them. God's got it. God's got it. And I just plan for tomorrow. Praise God. I plan based on the wisdom of God for tomorrow. I put the practical things in place for tomorrow. I do what I do for the Lord for tomorrow. I take care of business today for tomorrow. I ain't worried about tomorrow, y'all. Not no more. Can't do it. So we mustn't let worry steal our blessings or our strength. Live for today and God will take care of your tomorrow. Live for today. God will take care of your tomorrow. It is a wonderful thing to know that God will get us through today. And then when tomorrow comes, he'll do the same thing again. We can rely on him to do that each day of our lives. It doesn't mean we won't suffer, but God will give us what we need to get through. He's going to get you through. He's going to get you through. He has a problem when you don't believe that. God has an issue when we stop believing that he's going to get you through. You get so focused on the issue that you forget. And let me remind you, what do you believe? 
Do you believe God can? Or do you not? Because see, what happens is we make the mistake of thinking it's on us to deal with the impossible. God told you not to deal with that. He said impossible is his issue. That's his power. He's the God of impossibilities. He loves impossible stuff. He eats it like potato chips. It's just whatever. It's no big deal. It's a big deal to you, your impossibility, your circumstance, your issue that you're trying to figure out. It wasn't designed for you to figure it out. It was designed for us to give it to God. By what? Our faith in him. See, when we get carnal, when we get in the flesh, we're actually telling God, let me have it. You stand by. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear me. When we get in the flesh, that means that we're taking control of a godly situation. It's meant for God, not for you to handle. Get your tail off the throne and let Jesus have it. Y'all don't hear me. Some of y'all sitting in the wrong seat. <laughs> your name ain't on it. Your name don't have no power. We don't pray in the name of Derek. <laughs> y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Get out of that seat. Get out of Jesus' seat. Let him have the throne. He's in control. Submit unto him. Y'all don't hear me. Trust that he's got it. Come on now. Trust that he's going to do it. God don't mind it. You better believe that he's got your back. That he said that he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. That means you cannot be defeated. Do you believe that today? Because some of y'all still talking defeat, walking defeat, eating defeat, sleeping defeat, and you're defeated. God don't mind it. You better catch hold of this thing, this thing called faith and trust in God. Get that in your mind and your heart and know that he's got you today. And watch this tomorrow too. Good God Almighty. We are going to be what God has called us to be. Winners. Not losers. We're winners. And winners get the prize. Ooh, but the prize has already been established in Christ Jesus. Y'all don't hear me. We already got the victory today. God, today. Whew, man, take advantage of today. Take one day at a time. Mm. So it is a wonderful thing to know that God will get us through. We got to get through. Living for today doesn't mean we don't learn from yesterday. Listen to me. Living for today doesn't mean we don't learn from yesterday. Here's a quote from Albert Einstein. Check this out. He said, learn from yesterday. This is Albert Einstein now. Live for today. Hope for tomorrow. Come on. Y'all hear that? Learn from yesterday. Live for today. Hope for tomorrow. We can learn from our mistakes and past experiences, but when we need to move on, we need to move on. Come on. We have a wonderful hope for the future because of our relationship with Jesus, but we need to live in the present one day at a time. Go to Matthew 6 and 11, where it says, watch this, give us today our daily bread. I'm going to break this down to you. Give us today our daily bread. Jesus tells us that when we pray, we should ask God to do that. The NIV version says, give us today our daily bread. The key word here is daily. Watch this. The Bible does not say, give us this day our weekly bread. It doesn't say monthly or annually. It says, when you remember this, it gives us today our what? Daily bread. Daily bread. A simple sentence, but full of meaning. The term bread can be taken to mean a number of things. It refers to the physical, mental, and spiritual aspect of our lives. Bread is a symbol or a metaphor, watch this, representing everything we need to accomplish God's will in our lives. God has invited us to go to him 
and ask him daily for what we need to make it through the day. He will not fail to provide it. I repeat, God will not fail to provide the bread that you're asking for. We simply have to trust God each and every day. Asking for our daily bread is an affirmation of trust on our part of God. When you ask God, you're trusting God. When you give God the time of day, y'all didn't hear me. When you give God the time of day, you're showing I trust you, God, that you're not lying to me, that you will take care of me, you will meet my need, you will give me what I need today. That's what he's looking for. That's trust daily. Asking God, give me my daily bread. Hallelujah. Psalm 23 and 6, excuse me, 23 and 5. Psalm 23 and 5, and that V says, cup overflows. Y'all didn't hear me. Cup overflows. And then there are those days when our daily bread could be tears or sorrow or discipline. Well, let me break it down like this. Before I go to that point, we are asking God to give us what he thinks we need for the day, right? Watch this. Some days God provides us with great things. Come on. Y'all in agreement, God has done some great things for each and every one of us. Y'all better put some thumbs up and some hearts because you know God has been good to you. Yes, he has. Don't you even try to fake the funk, as they say. God has been good. He's done some wonderful things for each and every one of us. He's a great God. That's why we praise him. That's why we're here today in the spirit together, in oneness, giving God all the glory because of all the wonderful things he's done, the healings, the deliverances, the salvation. Come on, the things that you have. Some of y'all riding around in the baddest cars in the land. Y'all got more wealth than most people in the world and don't even know it. You are living a good life because God has been good to you, African-American. Y'all don't hear me. What he's brought you through, God has been good. He's met you. He's given you promotion. Yes, he has. He's allowed you to retire. You, Some of y'all got two and three, four, five retirement checks. Yes, you do. Stop lying. Y'all blessed like nobody's business. You got friendships, more friends that you can hand, hand, take a stick at. Some of y'all got more friends on Facebook than God's got stars in heaven. Y'all got so many friends, it's amazing. Abundance of friends, y'all hear me. You even have gifts, gifts of good children. Your children are blessed. They got their college education. They got these jobs. They out here living good lives. Your grandchildren doing well, excelling. You are so blessed. God has been so good to you. You have nothing to be worried about, but you worry. Yes, you do. You worry. Yes, you do. There are times when life is so wonderful, we're amazed at God's kindness and our cup overflows. Right. But check this out. And then there are those days when our daily bread could be tears of sorrow or discipline. Here, our portion may include, watch this, our portion may include adversity as well as opportunity. Watch how God works now. It comes both ways. Watch God. Watch God. It says, this petition of the Lord's Prayer teaches us to come to God in a spirit of humble dependence, asking him to provide what we need to sustain us from day to day. Jesus encourages us to make our needs known to him, trusting that he will what? Provide. Our prayer for our daily bread does not mean we can sit on the couch at home and just wait for God to provide us with money and everything we need. That's not what he's saying. God can miraculously provide us with food. Go to Matthew 14, 13 through 21. It says Jesus fed in that scripture 5,000 men plus women and children with five loaves of bread and a two-piece fish dinner. But miracles are not God's normal method of provision. God's preferred method is to provide our food through our own labor. Hear me out. If we can work, that's how we're supposed to eat. Do you know that's scriptural? God said that a man that does not work is worse than an infidel when he doesn't want to take care of his family by working in labor. Y'all don't hear me. God said it. You're supposed to earn it. Watch this. For even when we were with you, this is 2 Thessalonians, watch this, 3 and 10. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. It says, for even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. Get up off the couch. Stop collecting unemployment and go to work. Go get you a J-O-B and provide for yourself and your family. 
You are blessed and highly favored. You need to be out here being managers. You need to be out there leading the way, doing the things that God has anointed you and blessed you to do so that we have services and provisions to help, help people meet their needs. You can do the same. God's got you. Go to Colossians 3 and 23. The NIV version says here, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. See, y'all need to understand when you're on these jobs, you're working and you're working unto the Lord. You got the right attitude on the job. Some of y'all got some bad attitudes and you're getting bad results on the job and you're getting fired and you're getting replaced and you're getting over promoted because your attitude is not one where you're working unto the Lord, which means you do it with joy and gladness and gratefulness that you got a job. Praise God. You do it well and you give it excellence. That's God. Our God is an excellent God. He ain't a lazy, lying, slothful God. You better represent the kingdom well. On your job, in your business. Come on, y'all don't hear me. God is watching. He sees you. Stop misrepresenting the kingdom by being in your emotions and your flesh. Get out of that. Get in the spirit. The spirit of love. The spirit of servant. The spirit of humility. The spirit of goodness. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear me. Bread is a symbol of the Bible, which is our spiritual food. Bread is, is, is a symbol of God's word. It says real life comes by feeding on every word of the Lord. We don't just need physical nourishment. We also need spiritual nourishment like we're getting tonight. About 1500 BC, after the Israelites had wandered in the desert for 40 years with God providing, watch this, manna for them to eat. Moses told them this. This is what he said in Deuteronomy 8 and 3. Watch what Moses told them back in the day. He said, he humbled you causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Praise God. And about 1500 years later, after that incident, that situation when Moses got on the Israelites for being, you know, complainers, when God was taking care of manna, watch this. In Matthew 4 and 4, 1,500 years to Christ, Matthew 4 and 4, NIV, it says, it is written. Jesus brought it back up again. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. He told that to Satan. He said, I know, what, I know the deal, dude. I know I'm hungry. I know I've been fasting, but I ain't worried about my flesh. I got the word of God that will sustain me. The spirit in the word of God will sustain me in my flesh. So God's word is part of our daily bread. Drawing near to God requires that we dedicate time and energy to daily prayer and reading the word daily. See, some of us only see it on Sunday. On Sunday and Wednesday is the only time you get the word. That's not daily. <laughs> Daily is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's daily engaging the word. These days, we got to be worded up. It's too, it's too risky out here to be playing church when we need to be the church by feeding on the power of God's word on a daily basis in preparation for tomorrow, what's to come, to be in the destiny that God has planned for us. It becomes our daily bread. Go to John 6 and 35. John 6 and 35 says this, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus said he's the bread. That's another symbolic metaphor. He says, I'm the bread. I'm the word. I'm the one that's going to sustain you. Jesus said, I'm the one that's going to keep you healthy. I'm the one that's going to keep you strong. I'm the one that's going to get you through those hard times. I'm the one that's going to get you your breakthrough. I'm the one that's going to get you your healing. I'm the one that's going to save your child that's lost right now in the world. I'm the one that's going to help you break that addiction. I'm the one that's going to heal your marriage. I'm the one that's going to get you through it. Jesus says, I am the one. I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. Y'all better recognize who Jesus is and give him the, the, give him the credit that is due to him, the honor that is due to him. Because some of us get sideways, get in our flesh, get in our own minds thinking that we're Jesus, we're God when we're not. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. We need to come back to God regularly each day as we seek and receive divine bread daily. 
our faith and trust in God will grow. Asking for and receiving our daily bread from God plays a vital part in learning to trust God and in enduring life's challenges by taking one day at a time. Taking one day at a time. We can release our tomorrows into God's tender care so that we can be free to fully live his gift of life today. Amen. Amen. Whoo-wee, this is an invitation to salvation, praise God. This is an opportunity for you all to get yourselves together. Time to get born again if you're not there. I'm going to share something with you, John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die die. Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Praise God. That's what you do. Confess in the presence of the Holy Spirit, I want to be saved. Lord, save me. I want I want you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you are who, they, who the word says you are. Not they, but the word of God says you are. That you are the son of God, a miraculous birth, born to a virgin. That you died and was raised three days later. That you are alive today. And that you are in position of authority and power at the right hand of God. In control of everything. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Praise God. It's time to give. Let's give. I believe uh, Elder Cheryl has put up the options for giving. Praise God. We've got Givelify. You can mail stuff in. It's about uh, your, the giving the 10th, and it's all about, you know, your offerings and, and just being consistent. And I, and I pray that you get a hundredfold return for your, for your constant cheerful giving into Christ, into the Christian kingdom, into the kingdom of God. Not just at the church. We're giving into the kingdom, y'all. We're a part of the kingdom. We're kingdom. We're king's kids. We have to support the mission and the purpose of God's spirit in the earth. And we do that by giving so that God can continually provide for many, not just for you and your household, which he will do, but he will also bless our community. He will also bless all that is his as we become a blessing in our giving. Praise God. Next week's services, Sunday. See you Sunday morning. Amen. Come in fellowship. We certainly welcome you to come. We'd love to have you come in fellowship with us. We have a beautiful church family. We have a great time. You know, we're going to do our thing as we always do. Praise God. We'd love for you to join us. Uh, we love Lake Wynn and we love our family with Lake Wynn. And we just want you all to come and join us. And then, of course, we'll be back on Wednesday. Right. We'll be back on Wednesday with another message for you. Praise God. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you all. Love you. See you Sunday. Bye bye.